Hello everyone and welcome to my weekly update with me, Richard Perry, market analyst at Handtech Markets. Each week I take you through the key events I believe will be driving your investments in the coming days. Now, moving into this week, we've had um, a weaker dollar and that's coming across the markets and uh, has had a big impact across financials generally. Um, what we've seen is a lot of flying around the dollar significantly weakened on the comments from Steve Mnuchin um, on Wednesday and then uh, subsequently it sort of retraced some of that move uh, on Donald Trump's um, contradictory comments on Thursday and um, so the markets have been sort of flying around since then sort of looking for the next direction. There's been a bit basis of consolidation but is this um, dollar now um, getting to the point at which that um, was a bit of a blowout sell-off uh, on Wednesday and it could be now sort of positioning for a bit of a recovery near term. You've got Treasury yields which um, have pushed out significantly on the 10-year yield and um, it's sort of starting to find a little bit of a, a, a footing once more in the market across some, some of these Forex majors. Now, um, what we've got this week is a, a, a significant amount of uh, Tier 1 economic data. We've got uh, the US uh, core PCE, we've got the Fed, we've got the non-farm payrolls report on Friday, um, a lot of data that to, can certainly move the dollar near term and could very well sort of drive a bit of this direction um, that uh, the markets are just consolidating with um, on, uh, on the early sort of moves over uh, Monday morning. Now is this going to be sort of positioned whereby it, the dollar won't be rallying because potentially you're getting a bit of more um, rhetoric out of the ECB, sort of uh, talking about the end of QE. Um, uh, Klaas not from uh, from Holland was say, or the Netherlands was saying that um, it should be happening as soon as possible. Subsequently, the euro has been sort of outperforming a little bit today, and we had comments from Karuda, uh, Bank of Get Bank of Japan governor, um, talking about inflation sort of moving towards target as well, and that helped to stabilise and um, drive a bit of uh, yen strength as well. So the two major currencies maybe not um, sort of in a position to allow the dollar to uh, rebound there. But um, yeah, throughout this week, we've got a lot of data which could drive this market, these uh, markets. So in, in terms of FX uh, moves, as I said, you've got the euro, which is sort of teetering on the brink, really. It's uh, uh, sort of broke out quite sharply in recent weeks. Um, above uh, 122 figure. Now, a pull back towards sort of 120 to 121 area would be, I think, a, a decent buying opportunity on euro. Longer term, I think the euro still looks pretty strong. The ECB is moving towards tightening, and that's going to help to strengthen the euro against the dollar, I think, generally. Um, so, any sort of unwinding move is a chance to buy. Similar sort of story against sterling. We've got the, um, the continued sort of more positive signs for Brexit, which are underlying support for sterling. A little bit of a pullback on uh, on Monday for sterling, perhaps driven by political moves over the weekend, suggestions of uncertainty and un unrest in the Conservative Party and government uh, in the UK. Normally that sort of pulls sterling a little bit weaker, but generally speaking, um, sterling is positioned fairly positively at the moment. Uh, in terms of dollar-yen, again, similar sort of story there with the dollar-yen, whereby we've sort of had um, significant strength for the yen sort of got back to a level is it going to be turning around near term any sort of weakness um, in the uh, in the yen looks like potentially to be a buying opportunity because I think the dollar remains under pressure near term uh, near to medium term and uh, again if the uh, if the Bank of Japan does start to move towards tightening then we're likely to see a dollar yen lower in the coming months now in terms of equity markets what we have seen is Wall Street enormously higher, just continues to grind out gains day after day after day. Strength of earnings season has certainly helped that market run higher. Can it continue? Well, there's no real signs at the moment of it stopping. We've got earnings from Facebook and Amazon this week, which could have a big factor um, in uh, the direction of the uh, Wall Street markets in the near term. But certainly at the moment, Wall Street is fairly well buoyed and uh, continues to push higher. Interesting moves we've seen on the European equity markets. Strength of currencies have certainly not helped the DAX, certainly not helped the FTSE. But are we sort of at the brink of a bit of a turnaround, a bit of a buying into weakness? We've got the Wall Street indice, uh, sorry, the, we've got the, um, the FTSE 100, which is supported at 7,600. DAX has pulled back, but again, continues to sort of grind out higher lows, generally speaking, pushing out to higher highs. And that, again, has um, sort of helped to uh, drive a bit of a 
positivity, I think, um, in the fact that this this correction in DAX will be bought into. Now, in terms of commodity prices, what we have got is the gold price, which again is another um, sort of dollar play. A weaker dollar has helped to pull gold higher, but if the dollar starts to strengthen near term, that could see a gold price correction. Um, could see a move below 1344 on a closing basis. That would mean 1325 initially, perhaps even 1300 to 1310 being the long term pivot support. But that would be a buying opportunity, I think, on gold, because I think going forward it's looking fairly more positive. I think the dollar's under pressure. Subsequently, I think gold is going to be going higher. In terms of the oil price, again, a little bit of dollar strength would possibly take a bit of the wind out of the uh, oil price rally sales. But generally speaking, temp, uh, fundamentals are looking pretty positive for the oil price at the moment. You've got improving demand um, and supply constraint for MOPEC. Now, U.S. oil production above 10 million barrels could change that psychologically. Also, if we started to see the inventories starting to build again, would that um, play an aspect of uh, driving a bit of profit taking? That's what we need to watch out for. So, throughout this week, we've got a lot of data points to watch out for. As I said, core PCE on Monday. The main focus will be Fed on Wednesday, payrolls on Friday, two big factors there for the states. But in, in between then, you've got also Eurozone um, growth, uh, flash GDP, and also flash CPI this week, two aspects that could certainly drive the euro. Um, you've got the PMIs as well on Thursday, the manufacturing PMIs come out. Again, that will be a big factor to play in risk sentiment. So lots going on this week. Likely to be a focus on the back end of the week for payrolls, not just on the headline, but again on the average hourly earnings are wages going to start to pick up in the states that will be a key factor i think and a driver of the dollar so with that in mind i wish you good luck in your trading and i will speak to you next time thank you